And welcome back once again to Lifestyles. Well, Gary Price is here with us this morning, and he's going to talk to us about Medicaid planning for married couples. Gary is an elder law attorney, and he's going to give us his advice and some tips today because this process, you know, maybe some people don't even think about it, and it is a process, and a lot of times it's just very overwhelming for people. It is. So can you make it easier, right? I, I, I always try to, <laughs> yeah. certainly. And the overwhelming has to do with lack of knowledge mm -hmm. more times than not. When we talk about uh, Medicaid with regard to a marital uh, or a married couple, we're talking about a married couple where one spouse is either in the nursing home or going to the nursing home okay. very soon. The other, sp and that's the institutionalized spouse, and the other spouse is going to remain in the family home, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. the community spouse. And I, clients often come to me, I hear this a lot, where the community spouse is concerned that she's going to lose or he's going to lose the home, the right. marital home, to, to, because of Medicaid, or that the, the community spouse isn't going to have money in order to pay bills because of the additional costs now for the, the, inst yeah. of the institutionalized spouse. Mm -hmm. So, or they hear the, I, someone's told them that they need to, in order to, to protect the home, they need to transfer the home maybe to a, a, an adult child. Gotcha. Not a good idea. Okay, so yeah, so not the, the thing to do. <laughs> not the thing to do. So I tell them this, um, generally speaking, in a, in a situation with a married couple like I just described, mm -hmm. there are rules with Medicaid where we can protect, if not the entire marital estate, substantially all okay. of the marital estate for the benefit of the community spouse and get the institutionalized spouse uh, on Medicaid. And so there are certain rules that we can do uh, or, or plans that we can follow that have been approved by Medicaid mm -hmm. in order to protect that or shelter that money for the benefit of the community spouse so the community spouse won't be impoverished as a result of the right. person so going into the nursing Right, so this makes it all, uh, and you have to know about this stuff though, so that's kind of where you come in. And I'm glad you said that because you, if you walk into the Medicaid office, that's not their job right. to guide you through that process to plan their job is to either approve or deny you Medicaid benefits. So you got to be proactive. Right. And yeah, you need to talk to someone like what I do. Before you even go to the office. Before you go apply. to the Medicaid office. Right. Absolutely, before you go to yep. Medicaid office. You have a book too I that do. can help out. Yeah. Um, the, this, in fact, this book also talks about what we just talked mm -hmm. about with a, uh, with a married couple in addition to other right. uh, things that are relevant to the Medicaid process. Mm -hmm. Uh, people call my office, and uh, I'll be happy to uh, send them a copy of this book at okay. no charge. And um, also, if they call the office and make an appointment, I'll be happy to talk to them about their particular situation. Yeah, because everybody's probably a little bit different. There are, yeah, yeah everybody invests differently, right. and there are different. There's a different plan. Perfect. And your number? My telephone number is 812-479-8721. Awesome. We appreciate all your advice and your tips this morning and uh, to telling us about your book. Thanks, Gary, for Thank coming you. in. It's good to be here. Thank you. All right, you. we're going to be right back one more time after the break with Rockin' River City Ride. Junior League of Evansville is here this morning. We'll talk to them next.